Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're all right. So in our last video, we discussed how a business might grow using its own means, so its own profit, its own ideas, and simply grow in size organically, which is what we know as internal growth. So in this video, we're going to discuss the other method that is available to a business for growth, and this one's called external growth. Now, external growth is where business looks outwards. It looks for support from other businesses or maybe a chance to buy out other businesses to quickly grow its size, quickly double up without having to do research, hiring, and coming up with new product. So external growth is the means of expanding your influence and size by either merging with or taking over another business from either the same industry or even a different industry. Right? Businesses will do that when we'll soon discuss why you might want to take over a business in a completely different industry. But it would clearly make sense to take over another business in the same industry. For example, one furniture maker merging with another furniture maker means that another furniture maker's competition has been canceled away. It's been nullified. So it's something to look forward to as a business. Now, another term that is used to define external growth is called integration. And the word integrate, as you know, means when two things combine so well that they join seamlessly, right? You integrate well. You go well together. And when two business merge or combine, that's the process of integration. Now, there are two methods that we're going to learn through which businesses will grow. And the first of those is called a merger. Now, in order for mergers to take place, they have to be two separate companies. As you can clearly see here, the green one is the company A. Purple is company B. A merger is a situation where these two companies will combine their forces and form a completely new company, which will be a combination of the last two. So half of their stuff will come here, half of their stuff will come here, perhaps both of their entire stuff will come here, and this whole circle might go bigger in size. So that's something that businesses would want to do through mergers that go bigger in size, and if we can include both their resources, then you end up being a much larger business just like that. The other way through which businesses could integrate is called a takeover. And a takeover is where, again, you need two separate companies, company A being the green one, company B being the purple one. A takeover is when one company completely buys out the other company, so this one, company B, will no longer be in existence, and the company A will just end up being a much larger business because all of these resources that were part of company B are now also within company A. So that is how a takeover takes place where the buying company just becomes a much larger business because of the assets taken over from company B. So these are the two ways, and, and takeovers are interesting because takeovers can sometimes be welcomed by companies as a chance of taking the money and run with it, maybe try something else, and sometimes they are repelled, they are not welcome, directors sometimes don't want to sell. So let's look at those situations, what are they called, and how do those situations come about? So a takeover can take two forms. First of those is a friendly takeover. This is where the company welcomes the offer that is on the table, and one or more of the directors of the company are actually supporting the bid. And look guys, this is a good time to liquidate, we've done well with this business, we're getting good money for it, let's sell and maybe go our own ways or do our own thing again and start off a new business. So this is where an offer is there, and one of the directors is actually supporting it. So that's still friendly. The other type is your hostile takeover. This is where the bid is not being welcomed and all the, advi all the directors are advising against the bid. This does not mean there's a fight, they're taking over uh, forcefully, it just simply means that they're not welcoming the bid, but the bidder is coming, out, coming back with perhaps a bigger bid every time. So that's what we will call a hostile takeover. But, but the point of integration, and I would like you to emphasize on that, is that whether you merge or whether you integrate, when two separate businesses combine, there's going to be some time before those two can fully say that we understand one another. Right? Two different businesses have two different philosophies, two different cultures, two different ways of treating employees, different ways of paying employees, perhaps different ways of making products, different IT structures. 
maybe you're emerging with an international business, different languages altogether. So this, you can understand how naturally there might be some problems in the early years for those two businesses, whether merger or takeover, to gel together well. But over time, with better training, with better advisory, that point will reach where the two businesses join so well together that you can't even tell that they were ever separate. So it's just seamless combination. And when that point is reached, that point is called synergy. Synergy simply means gelling together. And once the company is one, then you get a few benefits from it. And first and foremost, of course, now you're a bigger company. Now you have a larger pool of resources. So you can you have more shops, you can have more workers, you could have more ideas because you're a much larger business now. Secondly, you'll remember the concept of economies of scale is that the larger a business becomes, the lower its cost of production gets. So that's a way to save money as well and add to your profit. And finally, once you take over another business, their outlets are your outlets. So you can advertise, you can become a bigger name, be more visible because you have that many more outlets. So on the evidence that we've seen, mergers and takeovers sound awesome, right? Everybody's business should be doing this. But are they really successful? How successful are they? Well, history and statistics have told us that not so much. Most mergers and takeovers will fail, in fact, in the early life. And there are a few reasons why they do that. And first and foremost, that since you're a bigger business, it's just the scale, the sheer size of the business makes it difficult for you to make the right decisions. It's just difficult to manage. You can't be in many places at one time. There are that many employees to look over, that many uh, customers to address to. So just because you're a bigger business, it becomes a challenge to coordinate and communicate more effectively as opposed to a smaller single business where you might be located in one building. After takeover, you might be an international business. So, so that communication gap will surely be there. Secondly, in order to go ahead with this merge and conversion, there are huge legal, financial, and marketing costs. You have to advertise and announce the new name of the company. You also have to make sure that whatever assets are being bought, you have the money available for that. You may have to take a loan to take over another company. Then there are lawyers involved to make sure that the correct legal work has been done, the paperwork has been submitted to the government so that there are no problems going forward. So, so, so there's that delay, the time that it takes, and of course, the costs that's associated with it. And finally, something we touched upon a little bit earlier is that two different businesses will have two different ways of working, two different cultures. And that's where you might see conflicts. And, and of course, you can't forget that once team, once businesses merge, or one take over another, you can't have two workers doing the same job. You can't have two CEOs. So you will have to make choices, which means that you'll have to let go of workers the trade unions might come back to you and that's another problem you may have to face so yeah it's a great way to grow but if you can get through these challenges only then will you see how these businesses really reap the rewards of the mergers and takeover